How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a wonderful day today. It is that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get creative, time to get inspired, and time to boost our imagination. So for today's inspiration, brought to you another little uh, wonderful quote from The Amazing Illusion of Life by Frank and Ollie, two of the amazing nine old men. This one's a little bit longer. I do have a shorter version up here if you want to read along, but uh, I thought this was a, a good little excerpt um, to kind of get you inspired in whatever creative medium you're using today. So this, uh, this little paragraph is called, That's My Character. Everyone who has worked on a picture will feel that he made the personal contribution that caused the ca cartoon character to come alive on screen. The story man naturally will feel that the character is his, because after all, it was the story work that determined what kind of an individual this figure would be. Oh, before I go too long, I did want to share this with you too, just because they have some visuals from Rescuers as well, so this is a little Rescuers pencil test as well. Okay, getting back in here. Uh, and the story, man, the story sketch man smiles because he drew the new character, made the expressions, showed how he would look, and the director knows that it was he who pulled all these talents together and kept insisting that the figure act a certain way. And all the time, the actor who did the voice is saying, well, I know he's my character because he's me. I did him. And the animator nods knowingly because no one can deny that he set the final model and brought him to life, and the assistants know that without his work, the character would have never reached the screen. The person who selected the colors, those who painted the cells, even those who carefully checked to see if this character had all his buttons, and the cameraman who shot the scenes, the sound mixer who gave the special sound to the voice, to all of them, he is their character. This is as it should be. Unless everyone feels this closeness to the end product, the dedication will not be there and the necessary care will not be taken to ensure that the end result will be the finest anyone can do. I think that's a great kind of synopsis about the importance of uh, kind of taking ownership of whatever it is your part is in the creative process and really bringing your personal uh, touch to it and really make, getting a sense of ownership to whatever it is um, that you're working on. But yeah, I thought that was a great little synopsis on that. So make sure when you're working um, today that you try and do bring to the table and make whatever it is that you have control of. Try and make it your own. And that in and of itself, especially if you're working in a more collaborative medium, will just add more life and more uniqueness and uh, that extra something special to whatever it is that you're working on. So without further ado, uh, again, I will link um, to this book. If you don't have The Illusion of Life, grab it. Um, pick up a copy. I'll have all... A quick little kind of rundown up here if you want to just see that quote and I'll link to the pencil test that I had playing over there as well now let's get into um, working for today I'm doing some animation uh, this is a skeleton king rig, rig um, from the steam community uh, by a user named puffin uploaded this one never used this rig before if you're new to these videos what we do is give ourselves anywhere from 45 minutes to about two hours and uh, see what we can come up with in, in uh, about 48 frames or so. A little bit of over the shoulder, a little bit of instruction, a little bit of theory, and overall just working on the creative process and pushing ourselves. And I hope that uh, these kind of videos keep you inspired to keep creating and keep pushing yourself. And also maybe you learn something along the way or maybe get reminded of something that you already knew. So without uh, further ado, let's get in here. So the first thing I usually like to do is create a polygon primitives cube just so we have some form of floor just to set our scene here and let's go ahead and turn the textures off by hitting five on the keyboard and before we get too far let's go ahead and save our file file save scene as and bear with me one sec we are using Maya 2014 today for those of you interested there will be a link in the information below to Maya as well uh, it's a great program so I've tried a couple other um, animation programs but I think this one stands head and shoulders uh, above the rest and we're just gonna call this skeleton king lock and I already saved a version earlier just to make sure that I was getting the textures right and everything when I was downloading it um, but without further ado let's get into setting up our first pose here Interesting thing is, this is constrained to it, so that'll, I think that will bode well for us. 
is constrained there. Good. Okay. I think I was thinking we would have to do constraints a little differently, but I think this will actually work pretty well. Um, they already have kind of a basic universal constraint set up here, so I think that's what we'll end up using. Now, what I was thinking for this one is we would do kind of a two hands straight out and forward, kind of a holding movement. A little bit, had a little bit of, um, if you're familiar, a little bit of Lich Kingness to uh, this character that I was thinking we could play up on. See if we can get those all working together. So one, two, two, three. Let's see if they're all going to work together. If they're going to work separate, yeah, that'll work. And then let's grab the hips here. Let's pull those forward. getting some intersection there, but I think I'm going to be okay with that for what we want. Do they give us a controller for the cape? Oh, they do. Cool. That's nice. Wasn't sure if we would have any controllers for that. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to approach that cape. It's good to know that we've got something that's going to interact with be able to use here. do translation on the neck really but I want to get this head up a little bit more than what we have it just so we can get it in silhouette a little more and again we might uh, change some of that up a little bit as we move were a little less pointy, just aesthetically, I think they would look better a little bit more. And I realize it's a skeleton, so of course it's not going to be too wide, but they have the hands that are really wide, so I would think that the feet might be a little more wider out there. It's a really cool rig, though. I've been trying to look for other animation rigs that you can get for free and download as well that maybe aren't as featured as much as other ones. It's been kind of where I uh, spend a good chunk of time trying to find different rigs for uh, these videos so let me know if you appreciate that in the comments below or if there's any other rigs that you think we should try out or anything like that as well they don't have individual ones. Darn. It's going to make it so that our posing isn't going to be as nice as I'd like to get in there with. But that's okay. At least this one, uh, unlike that uh, 
Warlock Golem one, I think, from yesterday. I couldn't do any of the fingers. I didn't have really finger controls that worked, so... Unfortunately, we won't be able to get... Uh, well, let's not give up just yet on our pose here. I was gonna. I was anticipating that we'd have to do a lot of constraints and everything on here, but it looks as though, huh? Interesting. If you notice this hand, you just kind of have these universal finger controls, or this other one, we have like individual ones. It's interesting that they have it set up differently like that. And that's okay. I'm all right with. It's definitely a different setup than usual. Usually you'll have, uh, with a lot of rigs, the, you know, one hand is set up similar to the other hand rather than have them be different, but that's okay. It means that we can get some nice ha nicer hand posing with uh, this other. out a little bit further. Maybe we can rotate that back. I just want to get try and get a good silhouette as we can get out of here. Let's go erase that down. Sword. Should we give it a little bit of angle or keep it kind of flat? I think I want to keep it kind of flat, actually. And let's go ahead and readjust that neck here. And put the head rotate. And let's do neck rotate here. Okay, that feels pretty good. those legs down and forward a little bit more. And what do we have to do here just to keep that separate here? That feels pretty good. Okay. So let's go ahead and save our file, control S here, and let's go ahead and turn everything off, turn our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons on. Let's grab everything and let's go ahead and set a key there on one and go to 48 and go there. Okay, now let's make sure that uh, constraints still work in here since it's set up a little bit differently. Um, now let's go ahead and start building our walk to our foundational stuff. Over here. And the foundational stuff is pretty much just the uh, steps and the hips and making sure those are all working before we get into too much of the nuance or the detail stuff for our animation. Let's set that, move it to 24, and with this one we're doing kind of a base um, 6 system for our walk, meaning that uh, our timing will be, uh, you know, 12 frames per step. Let's go ahead and pull those forward. There, 
good thing to do is to check the uh, distance between each foot on the step and make sure those are kind of similar there. It doesn't have to be exact. It's okay to have a little variation, but we don't want to feel like one foot's favored over the other. too much, but still alright. Uh, let's go in our translate Z here, and this is the left to right movement on the hips, and we want to kind of even that out a little bit, so there's not uh, as much like hiccup in that movement. And let's take our translate Ys, and even though I think we have the right idea behind it, it's way too bouncy for something like this. I want this to feel almost too static. Just changing the idea from sedent. I think it'll just be a little bit stronger this way. There. It doesn't seem like there's an elbow control here, unfortunately, which is going to make this harder to sell.
really strange that there's no elbow controller here. I'm trying to see if I can find one anywhere. Oh, there we go. I just think this will be a stronger pose than we had before. working better. I just think that's a little bit better, a little bit more fun of a pose. Just sway the uh, hips over whatever foot's going to be planted. we got to get those passing positions set up on those feet as well. positions. So let's raise that foot up and rotate back. And raise that foot up there and rotate it back. So you're getting that real poppy overstretch on there. We don't want that. Then we'll have to offset the chest and everything so we still get that nice movement here. Oh, where'd my graph editor go? There it is. And even that out. And we want to favor the one side, but still get a little bit in there. Let's go ahead and even that up a little bit more.
I'm just kind of counter animating that hand so that it keeps that sword feeling pretty consistent with where it is. And maybe we'll pull the hips down just a little bit just to avoid that real pop in that way. So. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and save this, and I think I'll give it a little, it's a little too fast for what I want, so maybe I'll move everything on to two frames. Might be too slow now, so we'll see. Come on now. Math skills. Uh, let's see.
the page that's done with those other careers in the same. forward hand as steady as can be and then everything else can move around it so that there's really like kind of locked on forward.
let's go ahead and push those hips forward a little bit more and translate Z. And for some reason that last step feels too small, so let's go ahead and push that uh, foot forward a little bit more and translate Z as well. Whenever you do the stuff with the feet, you always have to make sure your hips are readjust your hips a little bit more. Make sure they're staying in balance. Because balance is a good key. Balance and weight are two good things that if you can really sell those, you can sell that it um, you know has some realism to it. We're still recording here. Yeah, okay. Now let's get back into uh, everything with these mids. Let's do the translate Y on them. We just want to take what we have and kind of squash it down a little bit. It's just a little too much movement on there. It's feeling a little jerky. And then we want to take this and delay it, uh, what, two frames? Let's go ahead and take uh, these guys. We'll delay all those frame. Let's see. And maybe we can do some like, rotate here.
starting to come together a little bit. Just a little bit of ripple in that cape would be nice. It's coming together all right. We can go ahead and save our file again here. And let's go ahead and rotate. Uh, do a little bit of. Let's see, is there a toe controller here? I feel like there is. Okay, yeah. Let's go ahead and drag that toe back there. Don't want to intersect too much. And lift it up. Play it down. Just so there's a little bit of overlapping movement in that. Set it in. Grab it in, set it at 32. Oop. Drag it back, I'll make sure. And lift it up, give us two frames, and set it down. There's going to be a little bit of intersection, but with the. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. And let's even up that movement here, just so that it's kind of more uniform. That second one wasn't as good as the first, but the first one was a little too heavy, so I'll try to find a balance between those two. Let's see. And let's go ahead and do this toe here. So it's that 16, set it there, and 32, set it there. So was on so rotate forward there rotate forward there back forward back So there's a little bit of movement in that neck and kind of offset kind of what it, there's some thought some stuff that wasn't as good in that neck because of the movement of the chest. I don't want that up so high. That would be consistent with a little bit of movement in it. jaw things that we have. So like every eight frames they would go out and back in and out and back in. It might 
might be too distracting. We'll see. But I think I kind of like that idea. Just doing something there because I want to get some movement in that head while still kind of keeping true to what it uh, what we had originally. And for those of you who um, I've never really played Dota 2, so I don't know how this animation would stack up or if there's things that are similar to it or not similar, so let me know in the comments down below if you like these ideas that we're doing with this rig or if it's similar to something somebody else did or if it's brand new or if they should put this in or any sort of things like that. Let's uh, delay that movement between those two. Almost two more frames. Could probably even have it go faster and have it be on sixes. Maybe we'll just exaggerate. I just don't feel like it's right where I want it. Break it down a little more for this movement. Let's take what we have at 16 and move it to 14. Let's take what we have at 32 and move it to 30. Just so it hits a little bit harder. And let's take what we have 48 and move it to 46. Kind of slams into that next position. Jaw opens and climbs. So let's watch that now. Maybe a little less on the jaw here. But when it intersects with that chest because of how much uh, we've got it puffed out. So we got to be aware of that. Let's go ahead and scale that down. Let's see. What is this? What are we getting right here? Another cheek laser. There's not really that much expression in the head, so. Let's do a little bit of tip from side to side. Just a little bit. Just so we can have some angle with that chin in there as well, since we'll set it up. And let's go ahead and even up that rotate Y there. Let's go ahead and watch that now.
these fingers here. delay it uh, two frames. little bit of movement, keep alive in that hand. And delay the frame from what we have. Let's see. This one, and we'll push it uh, forward a frame there. And take this one, and we'll delay a frame, two frames there, just so they're not hitting at the same time. Let's go ahead and see it. This guy here, yeah, let's see.
I'm sort of up and down, we'll have it go side to side. that movement down a little bit more. starting to get there to where we want. Sure. And this one here. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and save our file here. Let's go ahead and turn our textures back on. Let's see and turn our nerve curves off. Let's go ahead and watch this and see how we how we're doing so far. careful about uh, show nerve curves and turn our textures back off and maybe you what if we let's go ahead and save our file here real quick and let's go ahead and delete this top movement turn our textures back on Let's watch it and see if we still get that. You get a little bit of flicker there, but that's not with our, with our animation though, it's just the texture itself. So let's see, let's show our nerve curves here. Let's see if we can't uh, turn our textures off. Get, uh, oh, don't like that. Let's see.
guess something with that. So let's go ahead and just turn our textures off and maybe we'll just keep it this way. Just looks better that way. It's a shame, but I, the animation looks better this way, so we'll keep it that way. And before we call it, uh, let's go ahead and save our file again. Let's do a little bit of uh, kind of tighter grip on this hand here. So what we have there, you know, let's uh, just grip it a little bit more. do a lot. I set it there and let's just go to 12. So there's a little bit of a grip there. Some movement in there. A little bit of keep alive. Hey, let's turn our nerve curves off. Let's go ahead and watch that now. I think that's working pretty well. Let me know down in the, um, actually let's go ahead and do a little bit of rotate here. down the movement on that kind of index finger here. Okay, let's go let's turn our nerve curves off. Let's go to play this a couple more times. Yeah, I think we got some nice character in there. I like the floppy jaw that we added on there as well. It's got some weight, it's got some balance. Probably play out around with that cape for a lot more and get something really smooth, but I think that works for what this is for right now. Got a little bit of keep alive in the hands, got a little overlap and sway in the sword here too as he goes. Yeah, I think that'll work pretty well. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you like this rig, if you try this out, um, share back um, whatever videos you come up with as well. Uh, definitely. Uh, try it out though it's a really fun rig and I feel like it's built really well and it's got nice constraints and everything too so it works pretty well which is really nice too you didn't have to set up any of that I was anticipating uh, spending some time doing that for this video as well um, so let's take a quick look again on uh, what we started off with um, that's my character everyone who's worked on a picture will feel that he made the personal contribution that caused the cartoon character to come alive on the screen well I know he's my character because he's me I did him to all of them, he is their character. This is as it should be. Unless everyone feels this closeness to the end product, the dedication will not be there, and the necessary care will not be taken to ensure that the end result will be the finest anyone can do. So while you're working today, whatever creative uh, medium you're using, definitely try to bring a sense of ownership to whatever 
even if it's a small part um, that you play in the uh, whole production line, bring whatever kind of ownership and yourself you can bring into a project and really try and um, take a hold of that and push yourself so that the end result can be the best you can do. All right, with that being said, I uh, thanks again to everyone for uh, watching the video, subscribing to the channel, and liking it. Always appreciated, and you guys have a wonderful and phenomenal day, and we will see you tomorrow.